Let me inspire you. Welcome. You're tuned in to Adelante with Arlene, and I'm your host, Arlene. We are all living in a broken world, surrounded by broken people. Sometimes it seems impossible on how we could even keep moving on. Seguir adelante. But take heart because there is hope. You see, others have experienced moments and seasons of brokenness, and they've made it through, and so will you. Today's message is brokenness. What is it and what it's not? Let's get started. Some of us may confuse brokenness when we have a broken heart, we think we're broken. But honestly, a broken heart and brokenness are two different things. Let's first look at, very briefly, broken hearts. Broken hearts happen when we lack understanding or the inability to accept something as being a reality. I'm going to choose a very quick example that happened to me. When I was single and I was dating, I might have had feelings for someone more than he had feelings for me. My inability to accept the reality that that's how he felt eventually led me to have a broken heart. And when you have a broken heart, you feel sometimes like you can't breathe. You truly feel pain and sorrow, not unlike brokenness. That's just one example. There are many others in different parts of our lives where our hearts could be broken for other reasons, but they are different. So what's brokenness according to the word of god brokenness is being broken in spirit broken in spirit please keep in mind that the hebrew word in the bible that's equivalent to brokenness we read as crushed crushed like when you crush a seed for it to be formed into a powder and you have the ability to look inside and see what's in it have you ever crushed a spice and all of a sudden there is this awesome aroma? Hmm. Well, that's, that's what happens to us. Just as that seed needed to be crushed, so do we need to be broken so that we can see what's inside. What is inside that needs to be healed so that we may no longer be walking in this brokenness. You see, brokenness is not when something is done against us, but when we have sinned against God or when we have sinned against another. Broken spirit, as the Bible calls it, is based on, our yes, our emotions, and we do get disappointed, and we may have regrets, not unlike a broken heart when we make choices, but it's based solely upon the choices that we've made that have put us in a position that we are now sinning against God or another. That is what a broken spirit is that leads us to brokenness. In the Old Testament, we can read many accounts of people walking in brokenness. I'm going to give you two, David and the prodigal son. Let us start with David. David was a man after God's heart. He, in his youthful years, was tending to the sheep. He worshipped God during that. He worshipped him. He also was the one who, who slayed the giant because he was such a worshiper of God, he believed that God and God alone can give him victory through anything in his life, through any obstacles, through any things that would come his way. This same David sinned against God and now found himself in a broken state. If you read, you will see the accounts where David sinned against God, found himself knowing and realizing and admitting that he had sinned against God, he was so broken that in Psalm 51, he confesses to God and pleads for God's mercy. He realized that in this broken place that he was, that the sacrifice that God wanted him to make was that of a broken spirit, brokenness, and a broken and contrite heart. A broken and contrite heart our God will not despise. Prodigal son wanted to go and squander all his inheritance. He wanted it early. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. He lost everything. He went on and he squandered it and did all these sinful things. He was with a lot of women. He partied. Oh, who knows what else he did. So when there was nothing left, 
he was homeless. He found himself eating in, in the pig pen. So in his broken state, he made his way back to his father in his spiritual brokenness, desperate for God's grace, and he threw himself at the father's mercy. You see, both David and both the prodigal and the prodigal son were broken over the sin that they had sinned against God. And rather than being broken over something somebody had done to them, brokenness is because of what they had done against God and against others. In their brokenness, they both threw themselves at the mercy of God. In Psalm 51, as I mentioned, David also said this, Have mercy on me, O God. O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. It was in this state of brokenness that David, as well as the prodigal son and many others, they realized how the sins that they had committed against God had now put them in a position of brokenness. So what would you say to me if I tell you that there is a way to allow God to help you through this brokenness and make you whole again? Would you believe me? I tell you, I too was broken and continue to go through seasons of being broken because when I become self-dependent, I sin against God and still want to try to do things my way. And as a result, I find myself in a state of brokenness and back to the same place again in certain areas until I learn what I must learn. There are a few things that you can do in your state of brokenness to help heal you and expedite this place and take you to the places that God wants you to be. Number one, admit that you're broken. We need to admit that we are broken. David admitted it. He went and he threw himself at the mercy of God as he prayed out to him. The prodigal son went back home and he threw himself to the mercy of his father on earth, hoping that his father would take him back. He admitted the errors of his ways. Admit that you are broken. Number two, now that you admitted that you're broken, spend time with God. That's what David was doing. Pray to him. Have a conversation with God and allow him to show you your issues, your issues of life, your pains and your sorrows that have brought you to this place of brokenness. That's right. Number three, now that you've allowed this, that you've admitted that you're broken, you're praying to God, you're a, you, you want to see, you want to know what these issues are so that you won't repeat the same mistakes and be in this place again. Now it's time to allow God to help you and to help you as you let go of everything that would try to hold you back. For example, you might have unforgiveness, let it go. You may have toxic friendships, let it go. You may have regrets based upon your own choices, let it go. You might have shame for your, your bad decisions, let it go. You may have guilt for something you have done, let it go. The word of God says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and I am lowly and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And in our brokenness, in our brokenness, we must seek. We must seek Christ. Maybe you're saying, well, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I welcome you today to give your heart to the Lord Jesus and see that God can do great things in your brokenness. So how can this brokenness help me? How, how, how? Well, God can use this brokenness. God uses these moments of brokenness to shine light on our character defects. In the 12-step program, as I mentioned before in previous videos, there is a step number four, and it says to take moral inventory of oneself, which means to start checking out. What are your character defects? Now, how would I know my character defects? Some we may know. Our ways of being self-willed, our stubbornness, our pride. But some we may not know, and we're in the state of brokenness. And the only way, again, I tell you, to know what they are is to seek the face of God. Because 
God can help us in this brokenness and he can use it. How? Number one, a character building. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. The broken in spirit. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Now that's both. We're talking about the crushed in spirit. See, there are some things in our lives that need to be broken. Our pride, our self-will, our stubbornness, our sinful habits, that's just a few. Our addictions, there's just so many things that have caused these cracks. When we're willing to see those flaws, believe me, God will show them to you in this broken state. And only then can we ask God to help us. And only then can we have our victory. You see, as Christians, you can be truly healed. If you're not a Christian, again, I welcome you to invite the Lord Jesus into your life because the only one that can heal and make us whole again is the Lord. How else can God use this brokenness in our lives? Number two, our brokenness should bring us closer to God. He uses these moments to draw us closer to him. Why? Because only he can help us and he loves us. Have you ever noticed when you are going through some test or a trial, talking to my Christian brothers and sisters out there, hasn't it led you closer to God? I hope it has. You see, we shouldn't run from our broken state. Even though it's not fun, even though it's not pleasant, we should not run for it, from it. Because these moments, if we put them in the hands of God, it will produce for us a better life. Brokenness is a blessing because it puts us on the road to break through. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. He says this in Matthew 5, 3. Those who are spiritually broken, spiritually broken, will be blessed because they will see God and God's power will flow through their lives. You see, in this broken state, when we allow ourselves in, to, to put it in the hands of God and do all the above that I suggested for you to do, what starts happening is now we're empowered, we're empowered to not allow those things, those issues of life that broke us before break us again. God can seal that crack. Dr. Tony Evans said, brokenness is a blessing because it puts us on a road to breakthrough. Breakthrough. We don't have to repeat those same sins over and over and over and over again. Our wills must be broken to his will. Brokenness is the humility of the spirit. The word of God promises in Isaiah 61, 3, that if we're mourning, if we're broken, he will give us a garland instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. The mantle of praise instead of the spirit of fainting. God remains with us in these broken places, in this broken season that you might be in, because he wants to make us stronger than before. How else can God use these seasons of brokenness? Number three, there is another side to brokenness. You see, the other side is that it leads us to transformation. Do you want to be transformed? I tell you, it's the best thing ever. God loves us and he has wonderful plans for us, for you and I. He has plans to give us hope, hope for a future. But our hope should never be in the plan and what we think or what we, you know, would like to have. The hope is in God, in God being with us through it all. He wants to walk with us through our lives, highs, and through our lives, lows. We need to not focus while we're in this broken state on the lows. Because we're going to miss out in the blessing that we can discover in those periods of brokenness and low. You see, brokenness should not be avoided because God delights in meeting us at the road of our brokenness. When we realize this, we need to surrender. We need to surrender this brokenness to God. Because his fire and glory come to consume and transform us. This is where we encounter his unconditional love in this place of brokenness. This is where we can encounter his incredible tenderness, the tenderness that he has for us. This is the place where he can transform us. How else can God use our brokenness? Number four, <laughs> brokenness is God's peculiar pathway to greatness. How can God use this for greatness? Let me give you another example in my life. For five years 
in my first church that I ever served in New York, I had a female pastor. She was a senior and after five years, she turned over the mantle, as we say, to her son and he was going to become our senior pastor. I was at the celebration. We were celebrating uh, his, his coming into office as the pastor of the church. I had my hands raised up. Everybody was worshiping God when all of a sudden I heard the Holy Spirit say to me loud and clear, submit under his leadership because before you can lead, you need to learn how to follow. Yes, God knew my heart. He knew those issues I had where I didn't want any man in authority to tell me what to do due to my issues with my father. So the next five years, ha, ah, I had a season of brokenness. Brokenness, God breaking me down, letting me see my pride, my stubbornness, my issues, my will, disobedience in many ways. And it was in the season of brokenness that God, a year, that God prepared me for what was going to happen. Because he had plans for me, right? And what happened was I eventually moved on to another church as I was led by the Holy Spirit, in which I was helping a pastor friend of mine that had a smaller church. And when I went there, about a year after serving there, I was asked to be a leader of an evangelistic team. So the girl that didn't want to follow and started learning how to follow and submitting under the power of God to do so, now was able to become a leader and lead others. And during that brokenness, I was humbled. I learned a lot about myself about my sinful ways, about my old ways. And I'll never forget that day. Brokenness is God's peculiar pathway to greatness. And I have many other testimonies from there onward. So if today you're in a season of brokenness, a season where you find yourself frustrated because you have done so much and you just don't know how to heal from it. You're full of regret, you're full of guilt, you're full of anger, you're full of all these emotions, all based upon choices that you have made. And somehow in this brokenness, you're trying to go on, on your own strength, but honestly, it's not gonna get you anywhere. It's just gonna bring you back to the same place again. And it's a vicious cycle. But if in this season of brokenness, you do a few of the things, all of the things that I mentioned above to start, I assure you that admitting to God that you are broken and you need him is the first step in your discovery of who God has made you and wants you to be and who you're meant to be. And you will be able to see that God has so much more for you. And you'll be victorious. And you will not have to repeat that same exact season of brokenness again. Not to say that later on there won't be other seasons. Because we're a people that, well, have to kind of be refined a little at a time. Because there's so much that we've been broken from in this broken world that we live in. So stay encouraged, my brother and sister, and know that with God, you can do this. Stay encouraged to know that in the season of brokenness is where you will see the greatest victories if you allow God in to help you. And that you will be free from those things that have caused cracks and made you feel not whole. With God, you can be whole. With God, you can be whole and not broken. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray that anybody out there that's feeling broken, experience these periods of brokenness that are causing them to feel they hit a wall and that wall, and now they feel shattered. I ask, oh God, that they would invite you in their heart so that you, oh God, would be able to help them. You're waiting, God. You're just waiting. You're waiting for them to say, I need your help, God. And I know, God, that you are sovereign. 
that you're amazing, that your greatness, that your power will help them. Open their hearts, oh God, so that may hear what you have to say to them today. I pray, oh God, this in your name for them and for all who are listening. Thank you for tuning in to Adelante with Arlene. I hope anything I said will bless you. Please remember to give a thumbs up. Please share these videos with others. Ring the notification bell so you will know when there's new videos. Please understand that there are many playlists and that any message that I've given, even if it was an older message of other years, is still prevalent till today because the Word of God never comes back void. So spend some time on my playlist. They're entitled different things. Inspirational, my thoughts. You'll go see them. Please check out my podcast, as you can see on the bottom of the screen here. And you will find all the platforms that are playing my podcast. And as I say at the end of every video, Sigue Adelante.